Thousand strong on hand to uh, watch number three Alabama take on 16th ranked Ole Miss. The weather cool and cloudy and a light mist has been falling off and on all afternoon. 57th meeting between Bama and the Rebels. The Crimson Tide winning five in a row the last five or three by an average of under four points a ball game. And this game and all SEC college football games brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition. The head coach of Alabama in his third season, Nick Saban, won a national championship with LSU back in 2003. He's been a head coach at Toledo, Michigan State, with the Tigers and now Alabama. Had a shortstop with the Miami Dolphins of the National Football League for two seasons. His counterpart today, Houston Nutt, in his second year after spending 10 seasons with the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Picking off. Miss, Alabama won the toss and chose to receive. Javier Arena, so dangerous alongside Terry Grant. And Andrew Ritter, number 96, set to kick it away for Ole Miss. And Ole Miss, Craig, remembers the way Javier Arena started the game out last week against Kentucky. A 60-yard return to open the game and put his team in position to get an early score and take control of that football game. Arena's average is nearly 30 yards a return. Settles underneath at the six-yard line. We're underway in Oxford. Arenas makes a little high step at the 20 and is swarmed down at the 25-yard line. So the quarterback for Alabama, Greg McElroy, and this former Texas high school quarterback rarely makes mistakes. You see his numbers this season, nine touchdowns and just one interception. His pass rating ranks sixth in all of college football. Alabama coming off the win over Kentucky last week, 38 to 20. They are a balanced team offensively, Steve. 462 yards a game, 228 on the ground, 234 through the air. And the first play, shotgun, McElroy sets and throws. That ball is dropped. At the 27-yard line, Julio Jones, the intended receiver. Let's check out our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. And up front on that offensive line, Carpenter, Johnson, Vlahos, Jones, and Davis. They've allowed just five sacks this season. The backfield, solid. Mark Ingram, keep your eye on number 22, averages nearly six yards a carry. Second down from the 25-yard line. First man through Ingram, slips and slides to the 29. Ingram nearly six yards a carry. Defensively for Ole Miss. Up front, Tillman and Lockett anchor the two defensive ends. The linebacker, Patrick Trahan, collected 10 tackles in last week's victory at Vanderbilt. And Brown and Lewis, the two safeties, anchor the secondary. Well, there is noise in the house. Over 60,000 shotgun formation for Alabama. Third down and long. Call it six. McElroy, good protection. Takes a pop. Drops it out to Ingram. Knocked down at the 31-yard line. Short of the first down. And Mississippi so tough themselves defensively, Steve. Sometimes overlooked because of Alabama's stature. But my goodness, number four in the SEC against the run. They allow just 274 yards of ball game. And they, they only give up about seven and a half, seven and a quarter points a game on average. This, this is the defense that is very underrated, very overlooked, and they showed up ready to play that first series. They, they gave up the short pass there on third down, came up, made the great open field tackle, put Alabama in a punting situation right away. P.J. Fitzgerald inside his own 20-yard line, high snap, handles it well, the kick is away in a beauty. Green underneath, he's going to take it at the 27. Finds the scene, 40, 45, and near midfield is Green. Ole Miss will have fine, fine field position. Corey Reamer with the special team's tackle, a 42-yard punt and a 23-yard return. The quarterback for Ole Miss. Jevin Sneed owns one of the strongest arms in college football, and Steve cannot afford to throw an interception against this Alabama defense. Well, Craig, when you look at what he's done this year, it's not as impressive maybe as people would have expected coming into this season. His numbers aren't where they need to be. He had three interceptions last week against Vanderbilt, and what's come into question 
is his decision making and his ability or his confidence in his ability to make the throws up the field. And when you look at the film, it does show up on film. There's no doubt about it. But Jevin came into this game. He knows what he has to do to play against Alabama right now. He has to make good decisions all game long. Of the 25 and 40 second play clock, those times will be kept on the field by the back judge. So a little added pressure for this officiating crew today, led by the referee, Tom Ritter. And Jevin Sneed getting those instructions as we speak. Sneed's journey to Ole Miss interesting. Transfer down to Texas, set out the 2007 season. Did play as a true freshman back in 06, but a guy named Colt McCoy came on the scene. Florida was a possibility, but there was a man named Tebow. And now Sneed leads Ole Miss. First down from the 48. And Sneed, first play from scrimmage, shotgun. Throws, near side, a ball grabbed by McCluster. So dangerous, gets back maybe a yard to the 49-yard line. And again, our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A as we look at the Ole Miss offense. And that offensive line protecting Steed is really beginning to blend. Right tackle John Jerry, a preseason All-American. Backs and receivers, none better. You just saw him, Dexter McCluster. He's a combo back with great speed and terrific hands. For a gain of one. Ball is on the turf, picked up. Let's check the Bama defense. Oh, and it's a big front line. Average man goes 6'5, 315. Linebackers, they'll knock you in the mouth. Very physical. Rolando McClain leads the tide with 35 tackles. And Javier Arenas everywhere. He's the star in the secondary. He will come from uh, the corner and blitz and blitz and blitz. A loss of one, third down and ten. Backs are split, shotgun. As Snee drops back, there's the blitz across the middle. Intercepted at the 35-yard line. Justin Woodle, the free safety, with his second interception of the season. And Steve, there's the mistake we talked about by Snee. No doubt, Craig. You had Robbie Green, the safety sophomore, coming right at the middle, number 23. You see him coming there untouched. This is what Alabama does so well. They come out, make you make mistakes, make you make quick decisions. We'll see if Ole Miss can rebound. If you come to Ole Miss at Oxford, you got to go to the Grove. Alabama three and out on their first offensive series. We've seen an interception on the first set of downs by Jevin Sneed, his sixth of the year. And now McElroy back at work under center for Bama. Three wide receiver set. Handoff. Ingram. Stop. Driven back. Lost a yard. One, two, three, four, five. Ole Miss Rebels in on the stop. Alan Walker gets credit for the initial hit. Number nine, the Sam or strong side linebacker. Olive Branch, Mississippi is home. A two-year letterman. Shotgun, McElroy, on second down and 10. Quick drop, wants to tuck and run, and there's nothing there. Driven back at the 30, a loss of three, and that brings up third down and long. It couldn't be starting out better for this old Miss defense. Look at it, you see a little bit of indecision in Greg McElroy, doesn't know what to do. And then, sure enough, the pressure gets to him, and boy, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of red shirts eager to get a piece of Greg McElroy on that one. You're going to see, you know, you had, you had really nothing up the field, nowhere for McElroy to go. He wanted to tuck inside, but Mark Ingram missed his block on the outside, and that allowed Greg Hardy to get in there and make the first hit, and about four or five more guys, four, four or five more of his mates coming to help out. First two games, three sacks for Ole Miss's D. Last two, eight. They throw to Jones. He's had a quiet season thus far and pushes his way to the 42-yard line. And Steve, how about going above the line? Well, 
Alabama's offense, as you said, Greg, they are so balanced. They cannot lose that balance against this Ole Miss team. They want to run it. They want to throw it. They want to keep them off guard. But Ole Miss, the big challenge, I think, to keep Alabama uncomfortable is to show up on first down, swarm the football like they've done so far today, like they've done in the past. If they can show up and make Alabama in these second, and third, and long situations, they'll be in control of this game. Fitzgerald should play throws on fourth down and move the chains to the 49-yard line. Trickery coming from Nick Saban. Well, you got to give Nick Saban credit. Marquise Mays, number four, is right here. And he's going to just simply settle inside and turn around and look for the football. And what a great job by P.J. Fitzgerald, the punter, to, to, to take advantage of the opportunity. Not a very difficult throw. A very good, risky call by Nick Saban. It was the right situation to do it early in the game, trying to establish momentum. The ball was out near midfield, so why not take a chance? It was only fourth and about two yards. You expect trickery out of Houston Nutt. Oh, indeed. But Nick Saban right there giving him a little bit of dose of his own medicine. Here we go. Greg McElroy out of the backfield. Fresh downs, first and 10 for the 49, and breaking through is Ingram. Powerful, speed, 5'10", 212-pound sophomore out of Flint, Michigan. Last week against Kentucky, carried the load of work. 22 carries, 140 yards, and two touchdowns. And this is a guy that's that scored. He's been, he's been in Alabama for a total of 19 games. He scored at least one touchdown in 14 of those games. He finds a way. He's got a nose for getting that ball to the end zone. And, man, he can catch it. He can run it. He can do it all. Nine touchdowns on the season. Six on the ground, three receiving, and he averages nearly 100 yards per game. Shotgun, handoff, delay, Ingram, piled and stacked up. He'll work his way inside the 45, the mark him at the 44-yard line. But this is ex exactly what Alabama wants. They want to stay in these third and short situations so they can, they can do what they do best, kind of pound it out, wear out the opposing defense. And by the time you get into the third and fourth quarter, they feel like they've got the edge because that's their style of game, physical up front, getting after people. You saw Bama's offense. They score 40 points a ball game, ranked 10th in college football. Seventh play of this drive, eight minutes to play in the quarter, third down and three. McElroy, quick drop. That ball is batted down and out of bounds, and that brings up fourth down. Julio Jones, the intended receiver, and Cassius Vaughn was able to get his hand up and tip that ball away. Yeah, I think Cassius Vaughn was out there on the outside defending the pass. It might have actually uh, gotten deflected by somebody on the way there. It looked like it, it did change direction for sure in the air. Greg McElroy knew where he wanted to go with the football. And unfortunately, Nick Saban for Alabama, they used the, the trickery on their last punt and nothing to show for it. Fourth down. Fitzgerald tries to boot this ball into the corner. Green lets it go by, and it bounds into the end zone. Touchback 20-yard line for Ole Miss. And a 44-yard kick by P.J. Fitzgerald. It's in a little trickery. We've seen a pick. We've seen defense here in Oxford. Scoreless on CBS. <laughs> 24-20, overtime. And back in 05, it was 13-10. You know, if you go by... The odds, you got to expect that it, it, at some point, the odds are going to favor that Ole Miss is going to come away with one of these wins. And I think Ole Miss believes this today is their best opportunity. With everything at stake, the atmosphere here, both these teams fighting for the SEC West. We'll see what happens. Driven back. McLean physical. McLean 12 tackles last week against Kentucky. Makes a stop here in the first quarter. And let's go above the line, Steve Erline. Well, Greg, the Ole Miss offense, they've got to trust themselves today. Don't try and get too carried away. Try and make things happen too quickly. Understand you're pretty darn good. Just do what you do best. But Alabama, their goal is to make the Rebels yell. Cause some frustration like they did in that first series. Getting hits on Jevin Sneed. Get these guys lacking the confidence they need to be successful all day. Coming up on seven minutes to play in the quarter. Ball a little overthrown. Sneed a little shaky here to start this ball game. You know, talking to Jevin Sneed on Thursday, Steve, you know, he understood the importance of this game, and so did their offensive coordinator, Ken Austin. They wanted to try to get him in rhythm early, and so far that has not occurred. Well, Ken Austin came out right and just said, he said, when 
Jevin Sneak comes out hot. When he comes out early and often doing well, making the right decisions, he can truly control a football game. Well, that wasn't the start they wanted that last drive. It was not a bad decision by Jevin Sneak. I think the pressure just forced him into a bad throw. One of three thus far, one yard and an interception. Three wide receivers top of the screen for Ole Miss on third down and ten. Sneak gets pressure. And that pressure forced him to throw that ball out, out in front of Brandon Bolden. Eric Anders, the Jack linebacker, putting the heat on Jevin Sneed. And, and this is exactly playing into Alabama's hands right now. Eric Anders, you're going to see right here on the right side of your screen, he's coming in. Watch him. He steps up the field and comes underneath. And just total confusion on the left side. Reed Neely, the left guard, should have seen that picking off and come back and helped out, but could not get a piece of him. This is what Alabama does best. They cause confusion. They come at you from all angles. Campbell gets the bounce, and Arenas is hit below the knees at the 33-yard line. Great special teams coverage. 45-yard punt. Minus one on the return. We're coming back next. And worn by his team, teammates, a lot of uh, memories that were shared during our talks on Thursday and Friday. Landshark. And they wear his number on the back of their helmets today in his honor. Number 47. Tony Fine. <laughs> Alabama 10 plays, 28 yards. Ole Miss has not gained a yard, Steve, on six offensive plays. Shotgun, McElroy sets up and throws, arches it up and in. He loves the tight end. Colin Peake, who played it. Georgia Tech grabs his 15th catch of the year. Uh, great, great route by Colin Peake. You're going to see right here, he's going to go up the field and out to the outside. There's nobody outside of him on the pass route, so he's got all that field to work with. And Greg McElroy, he may not have the strongest arm in the world, but he makes the right decisions, and he throws a very catchable ball. And I'll tell you, he spreads the football around. 14 different players in Alabama have caught the ball from Greg McElroy this year. That is hard to defend when you're throwing it to that many people. I don't think you were that kind yourself, and college or the pros <laughs> as McElroy looks for more up top sideline little push off I don't see a flag it's incomplete and Jones the intended receiver and a good battle with Cassius Vaughn number 24 in the right corner well the Alabama sideline thinks there was a little too much contact going on I, I would have to agree a little bit in the NFL that would be called illegal contact right there and Devin I think that could have been a PI Cassius Vaughn did not make a play on the football he made contact before the ball got there Julio Jones, man, this is a big, talented man. I was down there on the sideline before the game, and I was in awe watching this guy run, run up and down the field, pulling the ball, and he can do it all, man. He's got some great foot speed, but he's had some knee problems, unable to plant. And speaking of plant, Ingram is knocked back, and what a pop by Kendrick Lewis, the free safety. What a hit by Kendrick Lewis. Let's hear it. Can't, you can't draw it up. No, you cannot Better draw it up. No way. That. that was the perfect call by Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator for the Ole Miss Rebels. He knew something. He had it figured out perfectly. Kendrick, Kendrick Lewis timed it up. And, man, what a great form tackle that was. Yeah, Lewis, one of the defensive team captains for Ole Miss. Bama, by the way, 0 for 3 here in this quarter on third down. McElroy from the shotgun. Little pitch and catch to the flat and another stick driven down is Green on Ingram. Ingram versatile, move the flags. Bama first down to the 40-yard line of Ole Miss. And Craig, this is one of the things that really concerned Tyrone Nix. He said Greg McElroy, he is so smart. He studies it. He knows his offense. He knows where his receivers are. And in third and long situations like that right there, he is not afraid to dump the ball down to one of his running backs and let them run the ball and miss, make a few guys miss tackles and pick up the third down. McElroy shows that emotion. Studied John Parker Wilson. And what a study he was. Hand off. There's a broken tackle by Ingram. And pulls his way past the 30 down to the 25-yard line. And for the first time today, let's go back to New York. 
for an update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Craig, a wild one between Kentucky and South Carolina. Randall Cobb is in the wildcat to make it a two-point game. And then Will Fiddler in the game for the injured Mike Hartline as his pass batted down. Spurrier's team is up to 5-1 and one in Columbia. Back to Craig and Steve Berline. All right, thank you, Tim. A pickup of 15. One of the biggest fears for Ole Miss, especially when you talk to Mark Ingram, you have got to wrap him up. They are so good after the initial hit on picking up extra yards. He is strong, and those legs are always moving. Low snap play action as McElroy pedals back. Pressure! That ball hit from behind falls incomplete. But Ole Miss continues to put pressure on number 12, Emmanuel Stevens. Number 95. You're going to see right there, Manuel Stevens going right around James Carpenter. Not a real good job by James Carpenter, the left tackle for Alabama. Just a straight speed rush from the outside. And you can see he, I think James Carpenter did not realize exactly where Greg McElroy was. And tackles have to have a good feel where that quarterback is setting up. If they don't know exactly where he is, they're going to have a lot of problems because they're going to try and run the defensive end by him. But right there, obviously, Emmanuel Stevens had the angle and made the play. Seventh play of this drive coming up. McElroy talking to his tailback on second down. Hand off Trent Richardson, the fine freshman, lowers his pads and drives past the 20-yard line up to around the 17. Marche Green making the initial hit. Well, Monday, Dave's all new with Gary Shanley, plus music from Tim McGraw, followed by The Late Show with Craig Ferguson. It's all new. Dave Letterman on CBS. It seems as though Alabama has settled into a little groove here. You can see right there on second and 10, they're not a team that's going to panic and try and make a play at the field. They know the defense is probably going to be playing soft for pass. They'll power it right up in there, make seven or eight yards to get in the third and short situation again. They're down to two. McElroy wants to pass, has time, up top he goes! That ball is caught and bounds, yes! First down at the three-yard line, and again for the second time, Colin Peake, six foot six. What a target at tight end. Oh, he has really established himself as a great player. Last week, six catches for 65 yards and a touchdown. Pretty much the same route as last time. In fact, exactly the same play. They found something. They liked that matchup on the outside, obviously. But I'll tell you, the key to that play was the blitz pickup by freshman running back Trent Richards. Right there, look at that. Stepping up and making the play that allowed Greg McElroy to step up and make that throw. First and goal after the 14-yard pickup. McElroy runs to his right, looks to the end zone, and smartly throws it away. You know, McElroy is a great study. I mentioned he studied uh, John Parker Wilson, the quarterback uh, formerly of Alabama. He told us an interesting point, Steve. He considers, well, this is his 46th game. In, in a Bama uniform. He's prepared. Now listen, he's prepared to be a starter in each and every one. It's amazing. And I, and I, I learned something by talking to this kid the other day. When, when he said that, I mean, he said he considered himself to be playing from the sidelines in each one of those games. And I'll tell you what, it has appeared to pay off big time for this kid. Yeah, his biggest fear, he told us, to be unprepared. Richardson, the ball carrier, flags her down at the three-yard line. We'll get the call from Tom Ritter. The false start, the call. And those are the type of calls that will turn Nick Saban hair a little grayer. No doubt about it. And they're going to reset the uh, game clock back from 2.57 to 3.01, so they'll add four seconds to the game clock. March it back five, second down and goal at the eight-yard line. Now here's the matchup right down here. You've got big Julio Jones. There are not many defensive backs that can cover him one-on-one. -on -one. He's so big and strong. Marche Green has got the coverage on him right here. Richardson alone back with a timing pass up top. 
Oh, in and out of the hands incomplete. Boy, you made the call. Julio Jones, so tough to defend one on one. And Jones had it in and out and dropped it. You know, Craig, I don't think this is a good throw by Greg McElroy, and I'll tell you why. Look how much bigger Julio Jones is than Marche Green. Put that ball up in the air right there. Don't lead him out of bounds. Put it up. Make it a jump ball like in basketball. Let that big monster go up and grab that football over the top of anybody you want to put out there. You don't get that coverage in the right situation at the right time very often. You've got to give your man a chance to make that play. McElroy 5 of 11 for 54 yards. Third down and goal, 8-yard line. Long back, Richardson. Play action. There's that timing pass up. Tap, tight end, had it! And out of his hands is Colin Peake. They go near side on one throw to Jones. They come back to the tight end on the far side to Peak. And Colin Peak is six foot six, big boy also. And Greg McElroy right there did a great job giving his tight end a chance to go up and make that catch. Again, an obvious height advantage. Put the ball up in the air, let him go up and get it. But I think Colin Peak got his feet a little bit tangled up before he jumped, and it just threw him off a little bit. He's still got to make that play. 25 yard field goal to tip by Lee Tiffin. And it's through the uprights. Tiffin now 10 of 12 this season from 25. Alabama gets three on the drive. We're coming back to Oxford next on CBS. Alabama strikes first. 25-yard field goal by Tiffin. 12 plays, 58 yards, just over four minutes off the clock. And Ole Miss has got to feel pretty good about what they did down there, holding to a field goal. It's, this is an Ole Miss defense that is very highly, very highly ranked in the red zone. No matter any way you look at it, they, they, they make people work to score touchdowns. Only four teams have scored touchdowns in the red zone out of 15 opportunities down there. That's a very good percentage of only 27% touchdowns. They came through and made it even better on that last goal line stand there. And see that field goal, the first, first quarter points allowed since the Cotton Bowl win against Texas Tech. Jesse Grandy, number 10, stumbles, finds a hole to the 44-yard line. Let's send you to New York for the John Hancock. All right, Timmy, here we're 3-0, Alabama. 2.39 to play, opening quarter. And Jevin Sneed, Steve, got to settle down. Confidence is one thing he needs. We're going to go to the ground with Bolden. Finds a seam, turns the corner, takes a pop, and out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Woodle, the free safety with the tackle. Watch fantasy football today to get the last-minute news and analysis. You need to set your fantasy league lineup every Sunday at 11 Eastern, only on CBSSports.com. Well, Craig, one of the biggest issues facing Ole Miss, and we talked about Jevin Steed has to get going, but look at the look at the number of plays Ole Miss has had. They've only had seven total plays so far. That was the seventh play. So Jevin Sneed has not really had a chance to get into this offense yet. In motion goes Marquis Summers. After a pickup of eight, it's second down and two and nothing to win. Thomas stands up. Corey Weimer led the charge. Number 34, Brandon Bolden. There was absolutely nothing. Well, make no mistake about it. This Alabama defense is good across the board. You see right there, number 13, Corey Reamer stepping up. But Kent Austin, the offensive coordinator for Alabama or for Ole Miss, told us that they've got to stay out of these third and long situations. This is the best they've had, third and six. But they've the previous two series they had the ball, they were third and ten, and you're playing right into Alabama's strength right there if you do that. They've got to get yards on first and second down. Two wide receivers, top of the screen, shotgun to Sneed. With a flip out, oh, you got to catch it. Bolden, right on his hands, incomplete. That was first down. Easy money. That brings up fourth down for Ole Miss. Uh, Craig, I think both players are at fault on this one. I think Jevin Sneed had the easy throw. He, he put it out a little bit too far in front of Bolden, but Bolden right there, when he looked back, he slowed down. But that's the kind of throw, though, that a quarterback, when he sees his receiver that wide open in the flat, He's got to put that ball right on him. Don't stick it out in front of him. That's a running back, not a wide receiver. Running backs aren't used to stretching out for the football quite as much as receivers are. Stick it right on his pads, let him catch it, turn it up, and make that easy first down. Campbell back to punt, his first boot one, 46 yards. Arenas awaits, good hang time, waves for the fair catch, and takes it at the 18-yard line.
Alabama back on offense with the 3-0 lead. The field goal by Clifton from 25 yards out. Hey, Craig, when we were talking to Houston Nutt the other day on, on uh, Thursday, he told us the keys for this game, his offense has to stay on the field, convert on third down. They're 0 for 3 today. Their special teams have got to contain Javier Arenas, and they've got to win the turnover battle. They're down one in the turnover battle as well. So, so far, as far as Houston Nuts' keys go, they're not staying on track. Ingram tried the left side, brought down by a host of red jerseys. A pick up a two, second down eight, as we run up on a minute to play in this opening quarter. And, and, and why is it so important to, 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 to take and convert on third down and keep Alabama off the field. Everybody we talked to in Old Miss's offensive side of the ball told us the same thing. They've got to keep Alabama off the field because this is an offense that will wear you down as the game goes along. It's playing right into their hands. He's three and outs. Old Miss is going to have a long day unless they can find a way to keep their defense fresh. Two wide receivers set. McCoy, bottom of your screen. McElroy looks, looks, throws in traffic. That was a dangerous pass. Incomplete Ingram, the intended receiver. It sure was. I thought he was throwing that ball away, but he actually was trying to squeeze it in there, it looked like. Good coverage by the Ole Miss defense. McElroy takes a look to the sideline and runs back into the huddle. Oh, emotion in the house today. Over 60,000 in Oxford. All right, you got one of these third and long situations again. We've seen McElroy be very patient, dumping off to one of the backs. They convert third downs a lot of different ways. Ole Miss shows blitz. They back off as McElroy from the shotgun. Pedals back. Good protection. Throws underneath. And the grab is made by Jones. And hugs that sideline. Another first down. They move the chains up to the 35-yard line. And Kendrick Lewis, the free safety, bumped him out. Jones, we mentioned he's not 100%, but his speed upfield is impressive. Well, well, you want to see how much he likes getting physical watches. Here he comes across the middle of the field. Now watch what he does. Instead of running out of bounds like most receivers, he says, oh, you want some? I'll give it right to you right now. And Kendrick Lewis is, is going to lose that battle more often than not coming up on the big boy on the outside. That's for sure. And Julio Jones, Kendrick, give, you, give respect and give, give a lot of credit to Kendrick right there. He's not going to back down. That ends the first quarter here in Oxford. 3-0 Alabama will return after this message in a word from your local station. This Alabama third rank in the country with a 3-0 lead over the Rebels. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Berline, glad you're with us today on CBS. That's first quarter defensively for Ole Miss Strong. They give up the three, but offensively not a first down and only four minutes on the football field. Yeah, really bad offensively if you're an Ole Miss supporter. Not good at all. Jevin Sneed does not look to have any rhythm whatsoever. They've not been able to run the football effectively. This game right now is playing right into Alabama's favor. This is the kind of game they want. They kind of impose their will as the game goes along. And Ole Miss better wake up offensively or this defense is not going to be able to hold up all day. First down from the 34-yard line. Under center, McElroy now sets his feet, throws near sideline. And a nice catch on the dig route. Julio Jones making his... Uh, making his presence felt. We talked about full speed ahead. Couldn't really plant, but Steve, I think the cut looks good. Oh, not only is this guy big and strong, but look at the footwork right there. And you're right, Craig. The word from the Alabama coaching staff was that he's not quite 100% yet coming out of some of his cuts. His knee kind of buckles on him a little bit right there. Did a great job selling the upfield vertical route and then snapping it back behind Cassius Vaughn, who's much smaller, you'd think much quicker, but Julio Jones showing you he can get quick, quick when he has to. A pick up a 14. Jones now three catches for 38 yards. A nice mix of pass and run off the left side. And Jones only has nine catches on the season coming into the game today. Now he's at 12, obviously. There's the graphic. Is he on the right track through four games? He had, he's only two off of what his numbers were last year, but you know, you look at all the, the touchdowns were obviously a little bit different last year. He's coming off the injury, as we said, but man, last year he exploded throughout the second half of the season, ended up with 57 catches and really became a force in the SEC. Second down and five. Ingram takes a direct snap. Good read by the Rebel D. 
as they allow a two yard gain. But I'll tell you what, Craig, watch. This should have been stuff for no gain. You see the power of Mark Ingram. This is Alabama's version of the Wildcat. The first hit is right there, Patrick Trahan, and then two or three more guys come to make the hit and finally bring him down. But watch how much is made. The first contact was in the backfield by Patrick Trahan. He still manages to pick up two to three yards, and now Alabama, again, is right where they want to be. Third and two to three yards. Look at the time of possession. 12 minutes and 49 seconds, 27 plays for Alabama. And less than four minutes for Ole Miss. A little delay. Here comes Ingram, lowers the pads. He does not hesitate. He's the hammer, Steve. And you're the nail. He likes, he likes to throw the hammer down. Boy, he, he makes a decision. He makes a couple. What I'm, what I'm sensing, what I'm seeing up here is when he hits, when he gets that first contact, he drives through it. He's got the leg drive to power through that initial first contact. I have no doubt. I, was, hey, I guess I do have doubt. I was going to say I have no doubt that Nick Saban, with the way his defense is playing right now, will go for this one on fourth and less than a yard. Yeah, was, we saw a trick play in the opening quarter. Yeah, I, I, I just can't see a second fake punt in the first half, but I'm surprised. But, but then again, he feels pretty good about backing a team up and making Ole Miss drive the length of the field, I think. High hanger, Marche Green. That ball takes a high bounce and into the end zone. Good punt coverage. It hits at the three. Ole Miss at the 20 when we come back. 33-32 the final. Well, Craig, I bet you Nick Saban is burning up inside that last play of the punt. We were talking about how it would have been a good situation maybe to go for it on fourth down. Nick Saban says, you know what, I'm going to pin these guys back in their own end zone. And his punter punts the ball into the end zone. P.J. Fitzgerald, I guarantee you, does not want to get anywhere near Nick Saban right now because that ends up being a 20-yard net punt. That's not what Nick Saban wanted. Sneed. Addison rolls, rolls, throws, <laughs> caught at the 32, Jay Hodge. The senior from Morton, Mississippi. And Steve, we look back, three and out, three and out, three and out. Yep. Three and out all three times so far. One interception, obviously, the first drive. But right there, the first first down of the day. And Jevin Sneed, boy, he needed that. Shea Hodge, he went to his go-to guy, Shea Hodge. Had 122 yards received last week against Vanderbilt. These two need to start making some plays. They had a career-high eight receptions and two touchdowns. And this will try the ground and no turn of the corner. For Dara Eason, number 25, hunted down and a loss of at least four back to the 30-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know how if Jevin Sneed is going to make his living doing what he does right here. Watch what he does after he hands the ball off. He takes on a big defensive end. Right there, it goes down and cuts him. Ooh, good block by the quarterback. But I'll tell you what, if he starts doing that a couple of times, he's going to start getting there. These guys are going to start looking for him. He's going to feel that. But did you see the pursuit, Craig, oh. of that Alabama defense? Or the guys in white. They allowed just 64 yards of ball game on the ground. It will be a long day for Bolden and Eason and company. In motion, the tight end is Harris. Draw, nothing doing. And thrown down with an attitude is bolding by the middle linebacker, Rolando McClain. Well, you're going to see Rolando McClain. He's a perennial All-American. You see right here, he's going to shoot the gap. Perfectly timed blitz by Corey Reamer, number 13, and Rolando McClain. Rolando McClain had four and a half tackles for loss coming into this game. This is a team that finds a way to get into the backfield and shut down teams. I mean, look, we talked about, Ken Austin said the most important thing for his offense is to stay out of third and long. What do we got here? Third and 19. Back under 10 and a half minutes to play of the half. Shot down again to Sneed. Third down and long. Go throw the deep ball in double coverage. Nearly intercepted. And the intended receiver was Hodge. Sneed, no question, has an arm. Oh, he's got the arm. I, I, it's frustrating. Third and 17, third and 18, whatever that was right there. He's trying to make a play, but I don't like the decision. You saw running down the middle of the field, he had a receiver. He threw that into double coverage. Right where Alabama wanted him to throw it. And sure, under pressure again, it makes it a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult when you got Courtney Upshaw and company coming to put pressure on you like that. Campbell, the punter, with the kick. And the third catch taken by Arenas at the 34-yard line. Alabama up by three. 
Back on offense. And we come back. A 40 yard punt. They're right there is a, a man, Houston Nutt, a little bit more concerned about what's going on in this football field right now. This game is not going the way he wants it to go, but I'll tell you, he's feeling pretty darn lucky. It's only 3-0 right now. Not the the quarterback. Great play action. They throw near the sideline. That's Mays, number four, wrapped up and then reached out, got an extra yard at the 47-yard line. Marche Green, the left corner with the tackle. Alabama going no huddle now, trying to shake it up and take establish their tempo. Good solid first down play action play for Alabama. Good read, good throw by Greg McElroy. Flag. Out to the flat, keep his third catch of the Greg season McElroy to the 41, but a flag back around Pete, the 45-yard line. The play. One of the things that's difficult when you go there's no huddle is making sure everybody's on the same page. It might have been an illegal formation. Here's Tom Ritter. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Five yards penalty. First down. Wait till you find out what Charlie's brother is doing to earn some extra money. That's Monday on a new two and a half men right here on CBS. America's most watched network. Well, you made that call. You've been in that position a few times. I have, and it happens. You know, you, you, all of a sudden there's a little bit more urgency to get lined up, and somebody forgets whether they're off the ball or on the ball in that particular play. Frustrates a coach, though. Nick Saban and his staff. Good things happen. He's killed himself with a penalty like that. Good draw. Richardson. Over. Another broken. Two broken tackles. Look at the push on the pile. And again, it goes back to the fear of what Ole Miss talked about. Wrap up, make the stop. And Richardson powers his way for five extra yards. Tyrone Nix was very clear. He said, we have got to tackle well to have a chance against his team. These guys are strong, physical running backs. And Trent Richardson, only a freshman. Look at the other freshman in the, base in the uh, SEC. Boy, I like Richardson out of Pensacola, Florida. As a senior last year, ran for 26 touchdowns. How about a nine-yard average per carry? That'll work. Up and over the top, incomplete. Greg McElroy Good coverage by Ole Miss right there that time. Greg McElroy showing his patience, showing his uh, wisdom beyond his experience. Five. Making the right call, throwing that ball away. You know, this is the guy, by the way, his last 21 starts, you know what his record is? 21 and 0. He went 16 and 0 as a senior in high school down in Stevensville, Texas, and now 5 and 0 for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Pretty impressive. South Lake, Texas is home for McElroy. Three of eight on third downs. Pressure. That ball is thrown out of bounds. And Ole Miss's defense is keeping the Rebels in this ball game. Marcus Tillman. Bringing the pressure on McElroy. Yeah, Marcus Tillman, not the only one there. But good, solid, good, solid pressure. And you saw also Kentrell Lockett coming off the edge. He was right there to make the play as well. You know, the biggest question, how will McElroy respond to pressure? You know, Kentrell Lockett told us the plan would be, let's hit this guy and really test him. Let's see if he can handle it. That's exactly right. High hanger by Fitzgerald. Green. Maybe two yards the hard way up to around the seven, seven or eight yard line. A 41 yard punt and a two yard return. 8.32 to play in the opening half. Bama by three. All right, old man, let's go, Way Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. Alabama up by three. Well, I'll tell you, Marche Green with the punt return on that last play, in my opinion, made a big mistake. Craig, you know, you, you got an offense that's struggling, and Houston Nutt told us one of his keys was to win the special teams battle. Well, that was a bad decision. One of the unwritten rules, or it's, it's actually a written rule in college and pro, if that punt takes you inside the 10-yard line, you let it go. you got a good chance it's going to bounce in the end zone. Your offense gets the ball back at a 20. If you catch it inside the 10-yard line, you better do something special with that football or you're going to get the wrath of your coaching staff. Now their offense is backed up in their own end zone. They've got, you know, 92 yards to go for a touchdown. 8.32 on the first half clock. Shotgun is Sneed. 
Throws it up over the top. And a catch to the 25, Shea Hodge. Did he lose it? Oh, yes, he no. did, Alabama. Javier Arenas in on the tackle and then grabs the loose football. This is the kind of stuff that kills you. Backed up. I like there was a rifle throw from Jevin Sneed right there. And you see Shea Hodge should make that play, but no, it drops right into Javier Arenas' arms. Shea Hodge has got to make that catch. Here, here's my question. Is that a catch and a fumble, or is that a pick? No, no. Uh, Shea Hodge never had control of that football. Shea Hodge, you, you know how you can tell for sure, Craig? Shea Hodge. I, I guarantee you, if Shea Hodge thought he caught that football, he would have got up arguing. He didn't get up arguing. He came off the field. He knew. He knew that that ball, he never had control of that ball. It fell right into Javier Arenas' lap. A good, strong throw by Jevin Sneed out of his own end zone. Right on the money. It's called a back shoulder throw. That ball should be cut. You can see right there, no one has control of it. And then Javier Arenas is the one that has control when, when the play is finally dead. The ball never hits the ground. But Shea Hodge is a big-time receiver in the SEC. He's got to make that grab. Well, did Arenas have possession as he goes down? Oh, yeah, Arenas, the ball never hit the ground. Now the play under review. And we know what review means. If it's not obviously the wrong call, without, without a doubt a mistake made, they will not overturn it. Houston Nutt is hoping, obviously, because this is where Alabama is so good. After further review, the ruling on the field was confirmed. There was an interception. So the second interception thrown by Snead today, that's the third multi-interception game this season and through only two multi-season or multi-interception games all of last year. Yeah, he, he's not playing this year with the same level of consistency. And, you know, a lot of people are saying the loss of Michael Wallace to the NFL graduating last year now with the Pittsburgh Steelers is having an effect on that. But decision-making is what it comes back to. Seventh interception. They go for the home run and traffic incomplete. Double coverage. And McElroy took a shot. Marche Green. Greg McElroy makes the right decision most of the time. But you're going to see right here. Watch right down the middle of the field where Greg McElroy should have thrown the ball. I don't think there's any doubt when you look at the film. Right there, right down the middle of the field. There's nobody there. Should have been a touchdown. That was Preston Dial. Running right down the middle of the field, uncovered, and he knew it, put his hands up in the air. Clock at 8.18 to play, and now the officials step in and call the play dead. With a timeout call. Timeout, timeout. Ole Miss, Ole Miss burns and uses their first timeout of this first half. And we'll take a break. Bama. Up by three. So 8-18 to play in the first half. And see, you got to wonder, how much more can he ask of Ole Miss's defense? I mean, they're good. In fact, they're number two in the SEC in scoring defense, less than 11 points a ball game, number four in the, uh, in the, in the SEC in yards against the run. But they've been on the field nearly 16 minutes of this first half. And so far today, they've, they've risen to the challenge, but... It just can't happen all day long, especially when they're giving the ball deep in their territory. McElroy under pressure, throws it across the middle. Richardson, the freshman, makes a move, picks up eight inside the 20 for the 17-yard line. Allen Walker, strong side backer with the tackle. A Mississippi Ole Miss coming with the pressure off the right side. Good inside move. Good inside move by Emmanuel Stevens, but great presence by Greg McElroy to find Trent Richardson over the middle. Good accurate throw, picking up a good solid nine yards on the play to give him a third and one situation here. Bama knocking on the door, third down and one, under eight to play in the second quarter. Under center is McElroy, up in fancy, handoff Richardson, and again, slips and slides for five. Jonathan Cornell, the middle linebacker with the tackle. Uh, no tricks here, Craig. Just off the left side behind Mike Johnson and James Carpenter just powering. Again, you see a chance to make a tackle at the line of scrimmage. 
You're going to see right there, you, this tackle has got to be made right there by Cassius Vaughn. He didn't happen. You know, Richardson nearly ran out of the, the stop by Cornell. This kid, 220-pound freshman out of Pensacola. Ninth first down of the half for Alabama. Again, the freshman. Rolls off a tackle inside the 10 of the 9. Three yards, Walker with another stop for Ole Miss. So you can already see kind of the wear and tear taking place on this Ole Miss defense. Thank goodness they have some depth in the front four. They can roll in some new fresh bodies, but it does take a toll. Alabama more than content to stay there and pound it three yards at a time on first and second down. Second it down seven. Not the road drops back towards the floater. A pound that ball may have been tipped and knocked away in the end zone. And up with a hand was Kendrick Lewis. Batted that ball away. Well, I'll tell you, I question again the decision by Greg McElroy. Throwing, there were three guys there. Now I think, I think Marquise Mays might have been out of position on that play, running his player right into it too. But watch Greg McElroy, his eyes right away were going to that right side, looking for Julio Jones the whole time. That pulled the free safety Kendrick Lewis over there. Greg McElroy knows more about playing quarterback. He's got to hold that free safety if he wants to make that throw. Play clock down to two. They just get the snap away. McElroy in the pocket, flushed away. Has room to run. Chase from behind. Oh, he took a lick inside the five at the four-yard line. Short, short of the first down. And there was a penalty marker down. Holding. Personally, I think you've got to decline the penalty. You're going to, they're going to kick a field goal whether you take the penalty or not. Yeah, don't give them another chance to, to get the ball in the end zone. They can kick a field goal, but I'll tell you what, Greg McElroy, he's not going to last if he takes many more hits like this. Ooh. Man, high and low. Oh my goodness! And they were kind of, you know what? <laughs> those land sharks, when they see a quarterback running with the football, they are coming. They are trying to get a piece of the action, man. That's blood in the water. Oh. Tiffin hit a 25 yarder in the first quarter. This will be from 21 yards, right hash mark, and it's up and good. And I would, Steve, it's no brainer. That's a victory for the Ole Miss defense. No doubt about it. national titles could this be another title year for Alabama the scoring drive by the way seven plays 22 yards and Tiffin from 21 yards out as we went to break Craig you pointed out that that, that is a huge victory for the Ole Miss defense I mean Houston Nutt if you would have told him everything that's gonna that would have happened in this first half to this point and he'd only be down six to nothing he'd be doing backflips he would be very, very happy about that. Alabama with 175 yards of total offense. Misses Ole Miss has come back with just 11. The negative yards rushing. Yes, they've had the ball less than six minutes in this half. Unbelievable. they got to do something to keep this crowd into it. The fans are trying hard to get excited. but just not a lot of good happening yet. Tiffin teed up at the 30-yard line. Angles it to the far side of the field. That's Jesse Grandy. He'll bring it out. 10. Makes a move. Stutter steps. Drop to the 11-yard line. I see a flag back at the 32. Here's Tom Ritter. Well, when it rains, it pours. It's been a downpour in the yeah. first half. You get, a, you get a return that only goes to the 11-yard line, which is pathetic. And then you got a penalty on top of that. During the return, holding number 14 of the receiving team, half the distance to the goal, first half. 
Monday on CBS, it's Couples Night on How I Met Your Mother. Neil Patrick Harris stars in a new episode. That's Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. See if you've been backed up. You know, inside the 10, five yard line many times, but I don't know if you've ever been involved in a game where you've had the ball less than six minutes and, you know, yards have been cut, tough to come by. I would think this series here, with just under six minutes to play, has to be big, at least a confidence booster for Jevin Sneed. It's got into halftime. It's got to be. It's got to be. But they're starting in the worst possible scenario again. And right there, see now, Jevin Sneed's a better quarterback than that. And you can just tell that right now, he doesn't have the confidence that he has to have, that he should have, that he that he normally does have. We spoke of He's a confident kid. He's got all the tools. But that's a throw as easy as it gets. And when Ken Austin makes that call, the play comes up perfectly. He says, okay, my man's going to put this ball in the money. He's going to take it outside. We might even get a first down on that play, get out of the end zone. Now they're looking at second and 10, and you're playing again right into Alabama's hands. Now, I, you, you're going to see blitzing. You're gonna, you, who knows what you're going to see now from this defense. Shotgun is Sneed. Little delayed draw, lost it, got it back at the seven. Let's go back to New York. Here is Tim Brando. All right, fellas, Sam Bradford is playing today. He's 10 of 17 for 177 yards, but here's Chris Brown with his second touchdown rushing. Baylor has 0-18 all time against the Oklahoma Sooners. Let's get you back now to where they redshirt Miss Americas, Oxford, Mississippi. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sure do. They sure do here in Oxford. Yeah, this is dangerous right here, Craig, and I, I, I'd love to see Ken Austin. I think he will show confidence in Jevin Sneed, but he's got to make a good decision and a good throw. High snap, pedals back into his own end zone, rushes out, throws, and that one's up off the hands of McCluster, who so far in this game has not Jevin been a factor. And he's a man that needs the football in his hands with open space. I mean, look, look at this. 11 total yards right now. Interception, punt, 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 interception, and now, now we're going to see another punt. And I made a mistake. Where they've gained two yards on this drive, so it's actually 13 yards they've gained now. 13 yards in this first half. Arena set at midfield. Got a hand up on it, taking it to five. You could see it coming. Yep, you called it. You could see it coming off the right side of Ole Miss's punt formation. There was an overload and the, ne never had a chance. Tyler Campbell never had a chance. You're going to see the pressure coming off of the punter's right side, right over here and up the middle, too. They had pressure coming from everywhere. I, I don't understand exactly what happened there. You know, Houston not emphasizing to us the special teams are such a huge factor. There were three guys that were not even touched on that play. Second block of the season off the foot of Campbell. Corey Reamer's the one that got the hand on it, number 13, the senior. He was a special teams and defensive player of the week last year for Alabama. This will be a direct snap to Ingram. The Wildcat, a band oh, stacked man. up and again, Ole Miss. They bend but don't break. Johnny Brown. Put the stop, the helmet on Ingram. I tell you, cannot say enough about this defense, how they stepped up today. Watch Johnny Brown, number 20, just stand him up right there. Had good support, good help on the tackle from Allen Walker. But you know what? You, you can't coach this. You can't coach effort and heart and passion when everything is going against you. Your offense is letting you down. For these guys to get out there and keep rallying to the, to the occasion, Pretty darn impressive if they can do it again here. They've held Alabama to just two field goals. They've been in trouble all afternoon. Two interceptions thrown by Jevin Sneed. Then now they block punt. McElroy to the end zone. And complete. Julio Jones looked like he jumped off a trampoline, but in traffic. And again, Ole Miss holds. Well, I don't mind. I don't mind giving the giving Julio Jones a chance to make this play again. Ole Miss knew that ball was coming to him. They had him doubled. But Greg McElroy made a good throw. Greg gave him a chance to go up and make that play. Sometimes you got to do that. Put it up where either your man's going to make the catch or nobody is. And Julio Jones almost pulled that down. Tremendous play, though, by Cassius Vaughn and Kendrick Lewis getting that ball out of there. Third down. Crowd behind Ole Miss. Pressure is on over the top. Thrown out of bounds. Fourth down. Alabama and Kentrell Lockett 
came through and just I'll tell you what, it, this guy, you, you, you meet with him, we met with him on Thursday. He was so excited to play this game. He's done it all year. He's got three sacks. He finds a way to get it done. He doesn't predetermine his moves. He just makes them as the game goes. And I'll tell you, that, that pressure right there did not let Greg McElroy set his feet and make the throw to an open receiver in the end zone. Tiffin will try a 22-yard field goal. That ball is up and once again good. So Tiffin, three field goals of 25, 21, and 22. 9-0, Alabama. Nine nothing Alabama four plays they went a yard a minute off the clock and another field goal by Tiffin this time 22 yards. Steve I got to ask you how many times can you ask Ole Miss their defense. To stand up inside that 10 yard line. Well <laughs> I think they've already been asked too much. They've already been asked too many times today. But. In there, I mean, you cannot say enough about the heart that they're playing with. Obviously, they understand the significance of this game and, 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 and how this game is going to determine their, their, their senior seasons. Good kick. Randy makes a move. Throw on the feet. Cuts back at the 24 yard line. You know, defense, we talk about Ole Miss, we talk about defense for Alabama also in the first half. That's almost a given. The game started with them making a play. The first throw Jevin Sneed made was intercepted right there. And then, boy, they, they got the right defense called. These guys executed so well. They make hits, they pursue to the football, and then we'll see in the second interception, they go get the football. They make it happen. Houston Nutt told us going in this game, he said, when the ball is in the air, if there's any doubt about who's got it, you can almost bet your hat every single time the Alabama guy is going to come down with it. 13 yards of offense in the first half for Ole Miss. Sneed under center. Hand off. They're going to go to McCluster. Oh. And the 170 pounder from Largo, Florida took a hit from Marcel Darius, number 57. Wow. What a play that was. Marcel Darius like shot out of a cannon on that left side. And Dexter McCluster told us in our meeting on Thursday that he loves lining up in the back. That he looks at himself as a true tailback. He's got so many talents. They spread them out, use them in different ways. But right there, that's one carry I think he wishes he didn't have. Second down and 10. Clock rolling up on three minutes of play and a half. Sneed throws. And a one hopper and a few boos. That ball was intended for Lionel Bro. Today, look at the Ole Miss offense. Negative one rush yards, one first down, two turnovers, and just over seven minutes of possession. Oh. But they're still in the ball game, and that—that that is what Houston that's going to be preaching to this team at halftime. Hey guys, as bad as it is, we're only down nine points. All right, we can come back and win this game. Let's play our type of football. He's got to get that man right there, though. Jevin Sneed believing he can get it done. Great point. 0 and 5 on third down conversions. Third yeah, down at 10. Sneed sideline and through the hands of Pat Patterson, the freshman out of Macon, Mississippi. Marquise Johnson, the cover man. Yeah, Mar well, one thing, Sneed needs a little help. That ball's catchable. Well, it's catchable, but it was great coverage by Marquise Johnson, too. I mean, that, if you're banking on those plays being made every time to get a first down, it's not going to happen that much. That's a 50 50 proposition at best. Arenas is set to return. Campbell back inside his own 10 yard line. Line drive. Takes a bounce at the 45. Picked up. Arenas wrapped up at the 39. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Jim Brando, Spencer Tillman, and Archie Manning will have scores and highlights, and they'll preview tonight's clash between number one ranked Florida against number four LSU. Stay tuned. That's coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Well, what a day on CBS. You get number three Alabama, 16th ring Mississippi. Later tonight, number one, the Gators and the Tigers of LSU, number four. It just does not get any better. And look at this ball control. 
Alabama, 19 minutes, 41, over twice as many plays. But I, I, I mean, Nick Saban has got to be extremely disappointed with where he's sitting right now. I mean, he's happy to be sitting on the right side of a 9-0 score, but he's thinking this game should be put away already. Hand off, right side, Ingram to the 46-yard line. Emmanuel Stevens, senior out of Houston, with the tackle. Clock runs 235 to play. Now, this is the situation, Craig, where you, you, you've you obviously had trouble in the red zone against Ole Miss. So am I, if I'm the offensive coordinator, if I'm sitting here and I'm I'm thinking about what I need to do, if I'm Jim McElwain, McElwain I'm going to find a way to get the ball in the end zone from, from middle of the field. Let's make a big play. Ingram, past midfield, knocked out at the 46-yard line. Two good, solid runs to start, start off this ra this series for Alabama. You see Mark Ingram right there. He gets that. Can you give him that kind of a cut, that kind of an opportunity to get up into the line? Good things are going to happen for Alabama. But again, to make my point, I think Alabama needs to take a shot here and try and score on a big play. McElroy side on it. It's caught in traffic. Ingram and stacked up at the 44-yard line. A pickup of one. On the stop for the Rebels, number 86, Craig Hardy. Greg Hardy in on the tackle. Well, two turnovers by Ole Miss. Block punt. Ole Miss just kind of has hurt themselves, and Alabama taking advantage. And they like to have you do that, Steve. Greg, a lot of teams, you know what, they, they go along methodically playing the game of football, and then you make the mistake, and they make you pay. That, and that, that is the mentality Nick Saban has. I mean, his, his players are so well coached and so confident in what they do, and Greg McElroy offensively does not force the football very often. When they get the chance, when you make a mistake, they're going to pounce on you every single time. Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator, fresh legs up front now on that offense or that defensive line. It will toss out to Peak to tie it in. Greg McElroy. And they're going to count that ball complete. Just outside the 35 yard line. Looks to be just shy of the first down. You know, one of the things I think is causing problems is watch Greg McElroy. He has not really been able to set his feet today. Watch how he's kind of falling backwards. See that? He's throwing off that back foot. And that's what Kendrell Lockett was telling us. If they can get him to where he's thinking about the pass rush, they have not hit him that much today. They've hit him a few times, but for some reason, he's sensing something and he's not really setting his back foot. We're going to get a fourth down, go for it here for Alabama. One for one today, pitch. Here comes Ingram. Turns it corner. Can you say goodbye? Touchdown, Alabama. The big play you spoke of, and Ingram burns Ole Miss. That's exactly right. Now, I didn't think it would come in that form, but that's what I was talking about. Find a way to strike from somewhere other than the red zone, and Mark Ingram, Ingram obliges. That was an unbalanced line. They had overloaded that left side. They got lined up quickly. Missed Ole Miss did not react and adjust properly in a huge hole for Mark Ingram. Seven touchdown rushing by Mark Ingram. The extra point by Tiffin is good. Now well, Mark Ingram excited for good reason. See, you see there's just not enough red shirts over there. Alabama came up, lined up quickly in the unbalanced left formation and a quick toss and there was a huge seam for Mark Ingram. Ingram, 14 carries, 89 yards, Bama by 16. Ingram, 36 yards, six plays, 61 yards, and a minute 48 off the clock. Bama by 16. Look at this formation, Craig. There's only two guys on the right side of the formation. Everybody else is lined up over here, and you're going to see the hole open up. Woo! Right there for Mark Ingram. It's going to be a huge play. And, Al and Ole Miss, you see him right there trying to adjust. What should they have done there? I don't know, Craig. What do you think? Timeout. Take a timeout. Instead of running over there and trying to scramble and get everybody lined up, that's a huge play in the ball game. They have enough senior. They've got eight returning starters on this defense for Ole Miss. That's a situation where one of those guys should have stepped up and said, hey, 
It's fourth and one. There's less than a minute left in the half. I got to take a timeout here. Tiffin. Good kick. Back of the one is Grandy. At the 20, breaks the tackle, 25, still on his feet up to the 32-yard line. Jesse Grandy. Well, Thursday on Survivor, torrential rains hit the island and nerves are frayed. Can tribe mates pull together? All new Survivor Thursday, only on CBS. Kind of feel like that's the promo here in Oxford. Can <laughs> Ole Miss, their nerves are frayed. Oh, man. I, Can that, they pull together? That last touchdown made Houston Nuts' job a lot more difficult in the second half. If they're down 9 nothing. Getting them to believe that they can get right back in the ball game with a couple of good drives, that's one thing. But now they're, they're two touchdowns and two two-point conversions away from getting, getting back to even. Still a two-score ball game, but, boy, you got to have a lot of good things happen to make it work. McCluster gets the ball for two yards. It'd be interesting. He had a lot of emotion before the start of this game in that pregame speech. I wonder... His demeanor. What demeanor will he have in the in the, in the uh, locker room? Well, it shows right now what the mentality is. They're huddling up. They got decent field position off that kickoff, and you'd think if they were confident in what they were doing, they'd be more aggressive. But right now, they're just content to run the clock out and get back in the locker room and regroup. The cluster right up the middle. And he'll push the pile. Number 22. And that's going to end the first half. Frustrating first half on the offensive end for Ole Miss. They played some tough defense. Bama with the 16-point lead as we go to the locker room. Number three against number 16. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Timmy. Just a moment away from the start of the third quarter here in Oxford and Alabama. Third ranked in the country with a 16-0 lead on Ole Miss. Craig Buller, Jack Steve Berline. Glad you're with us at halftime here. And, Steve, you talk about Bama's defense near perfect. They allowed Ole Miss just 19 yards of total offense in the first two quarters. Well, I, I don't know what perfect is if that first half wasn't perfect for the Alabama defense. It could not have gone better. They have literally sucked all the wind out of this Ole Miss offensive football team, which, by the way, is a pretty good offensive football team. You saw LaRon McClain making a play in the backfield. You see plays all over the field. Look at the white shirts getting to the football. Man, that hurts just watching it. But these guys have come to play football. And Je Jevin Sneed... I'll tell you what, he better he better wake up this second half because his team is counting on him. He's taking a lot of hits, but he's he's not protected the football. The first pass of the game was intercepted right there. Not his fault on the second interception, but Shea Hodge had a chance to make that play. But Jevin Sneed, to me, does not look like a quarterback who really believes in himself right now. And as we talked about, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. you got to start showing some life out there. Look at the stats in the first half. We can see. Oh, it spells it, doesn't it? 14 carries for Ingram, 89 yards. He had that 36-yard touchdown. Sneed, 2 of 12, 14 yards, the two interceptions. And as I mentioned, just 19 total yards of Ole Miss offense in the first half of play. Now, maybe the good point is that you come out of the locker room after listening to Houston Nutt, and because Alabama took the ball to open this football game, Ole Miss will be on the field to start the third quarter. You know what? You, if you are Ole Miss, you've got to be grateful that this game is not out of reach right now. If I'm Jevin Sneed, I, gotta ha I have got to get my teammates to believe, hey, we're going to take the ball down the field right now and score and make a ball game out of this. Starting right now on this drive. But he's got to believe it for them to believe it. Tiffin, the short kick taken at the 10-yard line. And Grandy stacked up. At the, around the 28-yard line, and that's where Ole Miss will start. And see, if we look at the SEC West. Some will say this could be, maybe is, the toughest in college football, the division, the, the SEC West, LSU, Bama, Auburn, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Arkansas. Well, when you consider that... And Auburn got knocked off today. Made a nice comeback late, not enough. And the SEC West was 4-0 last week against the SEC East. That makes a pretty good case for it as well. Bolden tries to jump over the front of Alabama and picks up two up to the 34-yard line. Let's see if we go back and show you what happened. And look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possessions. Not a lot of good on that side of the call. No. That, that, that column right there. Absolutely. Two interceptions, five punts. They had the ball as we went to halftime. They open up the third quarter here, down by 16. They just need to have a couple good things happen. One or two good plays, all of a sudden, guys start believing again. Sneed, oh, push that ball. 
in traffic, Hodge, and this crowd finally has something to applaud about. That's exactly right. Shea Hodge, good tight coverage there by Kareem Jackson, number three, but you see Snead standing in there waiting, buying a little extra time. That ball just squeezes by Kareem Jackson's right arm, and Shea Hodge, good solid catch. They need a, I mean, that, that's one positive play right there. First down, second first down of the day for Ole Miss. Around the corner comes McCluster. A pickup of two down to the 45-yard line. Woodall and McLean. Great pursuit. Bama impressive, Steve. The guys in white just go sideline to sideline. I was just going to say the same thing, Craig. This deep, it looked like Dexter McCluster had the edge on that play. That they had a good play set up. He was going to get outside and maybe make five or six yards. But all of a sudden, you see the speed of that Alabama defense. Woodall came out of nowhere to make that tackle, but Rolando McLean was right behind him. You know, McCluster, love talking to that young man. He told us, okay, I'm the smallest guy. I was the smallest guy growing up, but hey, I had the biggest heart. Still do. Ball's batted down incomplete. That ball a little dangerous in traffic. Mark Barrow, or Barron, that is, the strong safety. Knocking it down. White jerseys everywhere. Yeah, it, it, this is a team, again, you know, we can't harp on it enough. If you want to execute against Alabama, you have to be precise. The routes have to be run at the right depth, at the right exact point. The ball has got to be delivered to the right spot exactly on time, or they're going to get a hand on the ball. It's just the way it is. There's no margin for error against the defense as well coached and as talented as this one. Rebels have yet to convert on a third down. 0 for 6. Big play. Sneed in traffic. Throws it away. Coverage. Coverage play. Nothing downfield. And now a flag comes out. Roughing. It, it could be roughing. It could be intentional grounding. <laughs> intentional grounding. I think Number he, four. Offense. Was he throwing Nick Saban? Fourth down. But he was definitely outside of the tackle box, which, you know, it's debatable. You can, you can you'll be able to see Jevin Sneed really, he made a bad decision, in my opinion, rolling to his left. There's, there's really nothing over there except the two, the two guys in white shirts. The referee is obviously not willing to let that slide for Jevin Sneed. Ole Miss now 0 for 7 on third down conversions. And again, Tyler Campbell called into punt, standing in his own 15-yard line. Low snap, gets the kick away, a beauty. That came out of a cannon. Wow. Takes a bounce at the two into the end zone. 71 yards. 71. Bama will have it at their 20 when we come back. Sixteen nothing, Alabama. Third ranked over sixteenth ranked Ole Miss, and time now for our Aflac trivia question. How many Heisman Trophy winners have Alabama and Ole Miss had? That's a good question. Think about it. We'll have the answer coming up in just a moment. You look at Greg McElroy, Jr. from South Lake, Texas. As he gets set for his off first offensive series of the second half from the shotgun. Play action. Rolls to his right, throws it up top and out of bounds. Second down. Let's go to Tim Brando in New York for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All right, Craig, Tim Tebow has been medically cleared for tonight's game. Will he help the Gators stay undefeated and keep himself as the Heisman front runner? He's third in the nation in passing efficiency and is within one rushing touchdown of tying Herschel Walker's all-time SEC record. Last year's runner-up, Colt McCoy, is still in the hunt. He's second in the nation in pass completion percentage, leading the Longhorns to an undefeated record. Now let's get back to Craig and Steve in beautiful Oxford. All right, thank you, Tim. As we look at second down for Alabama. Mr. Beeline, I got a question for you after this play. Hand off up the gut. And smashing his way through to the 26-yard line is Mark Ingram. All right, medically cleared to play. National championship on the line. 
Nick's, you know, you, you got to think Urban Meyer with a tough decision to make. The stage is big tonight, but boy, you don't want to flirt with that young man's health, do you? No, you know, and this is this is uh, the ultimate catch-22 here. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen, but it, it, in my opinion, it's easy for me to sit back and say Tim Tebow should sit. I'm not the one that's coaching that team. I'm not the one that's going for the national championship. I, in my opinion, he should sit one more week, but I, I kind of doubt it's going to happen. McElroy back to pass, throws a dart over the middle, incomplete. Colin Peak, the tight end, incomplete. And that brings up fourth down for Alabama. Now the quarterbacks. We got Tebow and Brantley tonight. Jefferson. Well, look at the completion percentage. And look at all. Look at all that in there. That's amazing. Seventy-three percent, sixty-five for Tebow. And, and the bottom line, oh, the, the the worry you have if you're a Tebow fan and a Gator fan is Tebow's game is so much physical. He puts his head down and takes hits. Exactly right. I mean, there's no there's no quarterback that's ever run it like Tim Tebow does. McCluster, fair catch of the 32, a 41-yard punt. Ole Miss will have it when we come back. 51 to play third quarter in Alabama with a 16-point lead on Ole Miss. Time now for our Home Depot tools to victory. Now the Home Depot the tools are very simple. You make a mistake against Alabama, you pay the price. Right there, Jevin Smith under pressure, throws the interception, first pass of the day. Right here, Shea Hodge got a chance to make a play. He's got to make that catch. No. But Javier Arenas, very happy to make the play and finish it off. Then right here, three guys unblocked on the punt. No chance to get that ball off. And Alabama, fortunately for Ole Miss, settled for field goals on all three of those. But then the backbreaker was a big play run by Mark Ingram right at the end of the first half. First down, backside pressure. And Snead never saw it coming. Took a hard hit. Reamer coming strong. Yeah, it just seems like Alabama keeps coming and coming. They give different looks. They, you cannot ever really get comfortable. And they played multiple fronts, multiple blitzes. And there we look at Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, doing just a masterful job. Alabama has doubled the time of possession in this game. It's been rough and rugged from the start for Jevin Sneed. Second down, 10, shotgun. Steps up, throws wide open on the far side, and McCluster with open space picks up a first down at the 47-yard line. Well, Dexter McCluster, who Ken Austin told us literally has the best hands on the team. This is a guy that was a running back in high school, but they've just, they're worried about using him as a pure running back because physically the toll that it would take on a small guy like that. But look at the great route. The great hands bringing it in. I'll tell you what, this guy knows what to do when he gets the ball in his hands. There he is in the wild, hot, wild rebel formation. Lowers his pads to the 49, stacked up and dropped. Let's send you now to New York for the John Hancock back in 2005, four seasons ago. On second down, shotgun again as Sneed runs out of trouble. Now tucks and runs at the 50, 45, 40. And Sneed brings his crowd to their feet first and 10 at the 36-yard line. A 15-yard run by Jim and Steve. And I'll tell you what, Chris, th this is one of those plays that a quarterback makes that can get the whole team rejuvenated. You see the way he decided to tuck that ball and just run. He said, you know what, I'm going to do something myself right here to get this team going. He tucked it. He ran that football like a man. He didn't look for a place to slide like I always did. <laughs> <laughs> he decided to run and try and make something happen, and he sure did. Now, I'm glad let's you see brought he, that up. Yeah, let's see if he can build on it now. Now, you were known for that hook slide. <laughs> Longest gain of the day for Ole Miss. Another hole off the left side. Bolden squeezes through. That door shut in a hurry, but not after a four-yard gain at the 33. Bolden, 220-pound sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Well, you know what we're seeing here now? All of a sudden, we saw running game plays for Ole Miss being hit and tackled and finished in the backfield in the first half. Now, there's not big holes there, but they're making two, three, and four yards a pop, and that's allowing, right now, the Ole Miss Rebels to stay out of these third and long disastrous situations. Bradley Sowell and uh, Reed Neely, the left side, opening up a nice hole with Gerald's the center, and now a timeout on the field called by Ole Miss. 
Now this Miss Ole Miss uh, front line beginning to gel just a little bit. They need to gel in a hurry here in the second half. Timeout. We'll be back on CBS. Time now for the answer to our AFLAC trivia question. How many Heisman Trophy winners have Alabama and Ole Miss had? A little trickery today? And the yes. answer is zero. Zero. That's amazing, the, the number of players, oh. great players that have come through both programs. Well, you just think of, of Alabama. Think of all the great quarterbacks that have come through Alabama. Well, they've had some that have been in the mix indeed. Of course, uh, you look at the Mannings. Archie, third, back in 1970. His son, Eli, had an amazing third place as well back in 03. There has been no shortage of great players out of either one of these programs. Ole Miss now, their first real drive of the day. Summers the man in motion, swinging out to the flat, wide open, big yards. Bolden at the 20, high hurdles to the 20. Call that the 17 yard line. Superman flying high. Well, can you see all of a sudden the energy in this football team? It takes a couple plays to get guys going. Look at this hurdle. Wow. Oh, he's he's regretting it right now. I'll tell you what, but that's the kind of play that rallies your team. This is an offense that now all of a sudden is playing with some purpose. Steve, two plays in this on this drive. Sneed's run and Bolden electrifying not only Ole Miss with his hometown crowd. Back to the ground goes the Rebels breaking tackles. Davis inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Enrique Davis, a sophomore from Lynn Haven, Florida. And all of a sudden they've got a little swagger going. You can see the right side of this offensive line doing a good job. You had big number 71 left guard Reed Neely pulling around the edge lead blocking but right there Enrique Davis breaking a tackle which today may be the first time we've seen a broken tackle by an Ole Miss player injured player Dave Ron Gerald the center for Ole Miss will step aside the Rebels on the move we'll be back Gerald's able to get off the field on his own Mark Zan Louis the senior from Palm Beach, Florida, number 65, has checked in at center. Gerald's old mentioned to the to the bench, I'm okay. You have to come off the field for a play. We'll see if he jumps back in. Second down. Current drive three. for Ole Miss started on their own 33-yard line. Steve Berline, seven plays, 58 yards, three minutes off the clock. And they're knocking on the door just inside the 10-yard line. Sneak goes, main coverage up top. Caught but out of bounds. He went to Shea Hodge. I really I really don't like the design of that play and I'm going to tell you why you're on the you're on the nine yard line right now and you, you make a big hard play action fake to the right side but when you're at that close to the end zone you've got to get a fade route to your receiver up quickly and to get caught up in making a fake to the right side and turn back and find him on the left side it just takes too much time that ball has got to be up before the defensive back knows the ball is up in the air. Gerald's the center back in after missing the one play. Quarterback keeper. And Snead able to keep his balance. Kevin pick Snead up a couple the to the seven. The well, it would have been great if he could have kept those feet. He wanted to. He just got a little bit tripped up, but he could have gotten pretty close to the end zone, I think, on that play. Well, Houston Nutt is going to sit in the field goal unit. You surprised down 16? <laughs> Clock running up on eight minutes to play in the third. Yeah, because it's still a two-score game. You know, this just, just doesn't do you any good, really. You still got to score two times. I, I mean, I understand there's a lot of time in the, in, in, in the, in the game still, but you got to take a chance, I think, in the situation. 25-yard attempt by Joshua Sheen and points on the board for Ole Miss. 7.49 to play, third quarter. Bama by 13. This past May, a convoy of football coaches trekked to the Middle East. So glad you're here. Ole Miss head coach Houston Nutt joined five other coaches on a mission of goodwill, bringing a break from the ordinary and much needed relief to the lives of 20,000 troops. It was not only a cherished experience for our men and women serving overseas, but for the coaches as well. The mission for us was to go and lift our troops and to see the faces of these young men that lay it on the line for us every day. Uh, 
was so, it means so much to us. Steve, I tell you, Coach Nutt told us it changed his life forever. That visit to Iraq. Ole Miss finally on the board. 10 plays, 60 yards, four minutes off the clock. Machine with a 25-yard field goal. Coach Nutt told us that he used the lessons and the, the, the meaning from this, the, the, what, what he got out of that experience over there in Iraq as a motivator for his team. He still uses it today. Telling his players, you know, you never know what's out there for you, what the future holds. Seize the moment. Get after these guys and, and, and understand how lucky you are to be where you're at. Arenas, room 30, 35, hits the edge, flag is down. Arena's driven down at the 40, call it the 39-yard line, but hold on. Flag back at the 34. I think that expression tells you it's coming back from Nick Saban. Yeah. Holding the call. Arena's one of the most dangerous kick men in the country. I don't know any any more dangerous. I'll tell you that the guy is within 230 yards of Wes Welker's all-time NCAA record in punt returns. See, that's a big flag. Instead of first and ten of the 35 of Ole Miss. You go back and start this drive at your own 20 yard line. Yeah, that's a huge, huge turnaround. Big mistake by Alabama. And the kind of mistake that, that Ole Miss now needs to capitalize on. This defense, which, which stepped up all first half, the whole first half. Let's see if they've still got any gas left in the tank. Bootleg comes to the near, uh, near side as Mays makes the catch and tackled at the 34 yard line. Let's go back to New York and check in with Tim. I like to see Arenas. I like to see Arenas do a little one-on-one -on -one with the man from Ohio State. First and ten at the 34. Play action, not the real pressure. Gets that ball away. A regular nearly picked for Vaughn right there, and the pressure came from the left side. Emmanuel Stevens. Well, you're going to see Emmanuel see right here, just coming off the edge. They are really having a hard time blocking him. Now, right there, that was a huge mismatch. Colin Peake, he's a big tight end, but he's not a big tackle. And Emmanuel Stevens will chew him up all day long if you're going to have him blocking one on one. No doubt about it. Now, you had Preston Dial, number 85. The H back was there to help Colin Peake, but he was too slow getting over to help. Impossible to block him. Ole Miss defense continues to make stand after stand. Second down and ten. Seven minutes to play. Not much. As Ingram hits a pile and is hit down to the 35-yard line. Jarrell Poe with the tackle. Had six tackles last week against Vanderbilt. That's a career high. And now third down long. And this crowd senses a shift of momentum. They're on their feet. Nakalor sidesteps pressure, runs out of the pocket. On his back foot, throws, incomplete. Darius Hanks, the intended receiver, and again, good coverage and good pressure. Armour, Lamarck Armour, number 94. Coming strong on McElroy. Another great series for the Ole Miss defense. They've, they've done their job most of the day with the exception of the one long run to Mark Ingram, which Tyrone Nick said the two priorities were to eliminate the explosive runs of Alabama and number two, take advantage of the opportunities that they have to make plays. That was the one mistake they made. They did pay the price. Other than that, they've played at a very high level all day. Fitzgerald. McCluster lets it bounce, picks it up, 26. At the 40, quick as a whip to the 42-yard line. Ball is out. Bama pointing, they've got it. Uh-oh. 
And the cluster is still down. Let's look and see what happened here. Exciting when to watch this kid when he gets the ball, no doubt about it. Now, ooh, geez. It landed on that right shoulder. Yeah, and neck. Let's see if we can see when the ball came out. That angle, you couldn't really tell, but you definitely saw Corey Reamer come up with a football. It's out, it's out. Penalties offset and the first down Alabama. One of the biggest concerns for Houston Nutt, the health of McCluster. He's 5'9", 170. They want him to touch the ball as much as possible, but the biggest concern is making sure this young guy stays healthy. And did you do you remember what Kent Austin, offensive coordinator, told us? He said he is the one player we cannot afford to lose on this football team. And, and, and I'll tell you, the way he landed on that shoulder, and neck and the way he's walking off the field it looks like it's a shoulder possibly a, a neck or, or, or a head that's causing the problems boy that was an incredible play by Corey Reamer I don't know if you saw that play but the way that he ripped that ball out while making the, the, the very aggressive tackle was amazing Ingram. The play action pressure oh, oh. I'll tell you what. Lockett making that hit. This defense it is really impressing me. I, I mean, finished off right there by Jonathan Cornell. I mean, wow. There was pressure. It was, it was the perfect time to call that play. Tyrone Nix doing an absolutely spectacular job calling plays for this defense, keeping this ball game reachable for the old Miss Rebel. You know, Lockett nearly just pushed Ingram right into the lap of uh, McElroy. An amazing play. A loss of 11, second and 21. A little slant in the seam to Jones. He got off to a hot start in the opening quarter, and they go to him here with five minutes to play in the third. Yeah, he's been kind of quiet lately. They've tried to hit him a few times on the fade route in the end zone. But right there, that was a little quick screen. Trying to trying to pop him up the seam behind a few of his teammates and uh, very well played again by Mississippi. Now let's see what Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, has up his sleeve. Big third down and 17. Under five minutes to play in the third. Alabama just one of their last eight on third down conversion. Shotgun is McElroy. Good protection throws a dart. Caught. Looks to be short at the 32. Marquise Mays came back, went on a knee to make the grab. Yeah, you know, that, that, that you look at how well Ole Miss has played, you can't question anything. Again, decent pressure right there coming from the outside. But a big lane for Greg, Gregory McElroy to make that throw one-on-one. -on -one. Marquise Mays goes down and makes a nice catch just short of the first down. But looked like there was a little bit too much space underneath in my opinion they should have maybe either you're going to come with an all-out blitz there make them throw the ball quickly or you drop everybody back in the coverage don't give up a big lane like that Bama's got to hurry play clock to one they're going for it and first down Ingram bangs through the line and Nick Saban very happy with that result but it was the third down play that made that made that play possible. You pick up 16 yards on third and 17. That's better than you can hope for in most cases. And there you see Alabama's offense today. 115 yards rushing, 269 total yards. It's a struggle for them. This Ole Miss defense is very, very good. Fresh down from the 28. Ingram cuts it back up the middle, breaks one tackle, breaks another, has room, 10, 5, Ingram to the three-yard line. What a powerful, quick runner is Mark Ingram. Well, uh, you, know, you know what happens, Craig, when, you, when all of a sudden you've got a team backed up third and long, you're playing your heart out all day long, 
You've been stepping up, rising to the challenge. All of a sudden, they make a big third down play, and then they make it easily on fourth down. It just kind of, it just gives you that gut punch that you just, you've been putting off, you've been holding off, you've been standing up to it all day long. But right now, all of a sudden, Alabama, they sense the kill, and they're starting to come at you, get more physical. Looks like they may be wearing down Ole Miss a little bit here. 140 yards last week against Kentucky. Ingram with 124. That ball is out and is picked up and covered up by McElroy. Yeah, that, <laughs> I think uh, that was in the hands. That was in his hands, but I think the uh, the, the snap was <laughs> a little had a little bit of steam on it. Kind of caught him off guard. It was in his face before he knew it. Second down and goal. Ball marked down to the seven. Shot gun. Not the wall. Hand off. Here comes Ingram. And drop down inside the four yard line of the three. Can Ole Miss stand up again in the red zone? I, I mean, we, we talked about it early. They'd only given up four touchdowns and 15 possessions in the red zone today. This is the fourth time they've had the ball in the red zone. The first three have resulted in field goals. And they stand up again today. That would be one of the most impressive things I think I've ever seen out of a, 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 out of a defense and be able to stand up that many times during the course of the game against a team with the power and the physical nature of the running game and the offensive attack of Alabama. Yeah, moments ago you saw Tyrone Nix, the D coordinator of Ole Miss. He can't ask for much more than he's gotten out of his players this afternoon. Julio Jones right there. Third down and goal. And cover at top no. Fourth down. It's almost predictable what they're going to do in that situation. Not a lot of air. McElroy's been unable to really just time that little uh, man coverage pass over the top today. Yeah, he, he's that has not been one of his strengths today. And they, you know he's he's given Julio Jones a couple of chances. To make those catches, but I think he's had opportunities. If you're going to take that throw, go to Julio Jones's strength. That is up in the air. Let him go up and grab that thing where no one else can. At least you have a chance for it at that point. And Tiffin trying for his fourth field goal of the day. This from 21 yards, and it splits the uprights. Tiffin from 21, and the lead 19 3, Alabama. Craig and Steve. All right, Tim. So Tim Tebow is in the house at Death Valley. Nine plays, 36 yards. Tiff on a 21-yard field goal. As you look at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, today's attendance 62,657. That is a stadium record. And how about this, Steve? A record for a football game in the state of Mississippi. Got to love it. Although I'll tell you what, these these fans I think were expecting the Rebels to put on a little bit better show than they had at this point. If I were Houston nut, I'd be given the go signal right now. This would be a good time to start playing some football. I would agree. You got a quarter plus a minute 12 remaining. Tiffin the kick. Angles it to the far side. It's Bolden and around the 10 opening. Oh, that ball is out! One official, two officials point Ole Miss's way, but oh, playing with dynamite. Oh, that would have been back-to-back -back fumbles on returns. Bolden right here running the ball very well. Takes a big hit right there and just fights on through, but the ball still squirts out. You see how well coached. It was Nico Johnson on the hit. That's a freshman. He put the pad on him and then reached in. And reached in and stripped it. So a minute three to play third quarter. Back comes Ole Miss. Jevin Sneed in the shotgun at the 42-yard line. Good field position for the Rebels. They set up the bubble screen. Oh, Here comes Bolden. A lot of room. 50, 45. Puts his pads down and is knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Make sure you stay tuned tonight in prime time here on CBS. Number one ranked, the Gators of Florida taking on fourth-ranked LSU. Death Valley. The Gators and the Tigers tonight on CBS. That was a 20-yard gain by Bolden. And set up perfectly. 
That was that was the absolute perfect setup for the screen pass. And the scene right on the money is Summers. And all of a sudden, Ole Miss moving the ball. At the 25 yard line, move the chains, first down, 31 seconds of play in the quarter. Now, Craig, I'm, I'm not one to second guess, I, but I do have opinions, and, and, and I really think that the decision that was made on the last old Miss drive to take the field goal was a mistake because you still were down two scores. It doesn't really help you. You're down there. You don't know how many chances you're going to have to get back down there against Alabama. I think you've got to go for the touchdown there. And then right here, you're going to make it a one-score game. Enrique Davis pushed back. No gain. Second down and 10. As we come up on the end of the third quarter, we played three in Oxford. Alabama leads Ole Miss 19 to three. We'll return after this word from your local station. Fifteen minutes to play in Oxford, Mississippi, Alabama with a 16 point win and aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports is provided by DirecTV. Craig Buller, Jack Steve Burline. I would say the time is now. Ole Miss needs to find the end zone. Well, they've found some rhythm. Yeah, we know that they're playing much better the second half. And, and if they can find a way to punch this ball in the end zone, they'll definitely go for the two point conversion to make it an eight point ball game if they can. But They've got to keep the momentum going. There's no time to mess around now. This is the time they've got to cash in. They're making some positive plays. They're not going to have many more chances. It's got to happen now. With the pressure on Jevin Sneed, trying to get his ball club in the end zone as Houston Nutt paces the sideline, second down and 10 from the 25-yard line. We start the fourth quarter from Oxford. Sneed. A tiny pass up top. That ball popped out, had it. Dropped it, had it again, lost it. Bolden. Craig, th th these are the kind of plays that if you want to win a football game, we, we saw a drop earlier that resulted in an interception by Shea Hodge. Right there, Brandon Bolden had a chance to make that play. He's got both hands on it, but wow, what a great job. Yeah. Robbie Green. Robbie Green getting in there and just keeping him from getting that ball secured. Punching away. Yep. Simple. Yep. These guys obviously spend a lot of time on that because they are as good as anybody I've seen. Ole Miss 0 for 8 on third down conversion. Here they come. Here. here comes Bama in the pocket. Sneed up top. Got a flag. There's contact and a flag at the 10. Marquise Johnson, Bobby, Robbie Green involved on that collision around the 10 yard line. Tom Ritter and his crew busy today. We'll get the call. The microphone was not on. I believe he said Javier Arenas with the pass interference. And don't forget, later in the game, we'll have the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Well, Nick Saban, they decided to come with the house on that play. Nick Saban hoping to. While Jevin Stevens into making a bad decision or maybe getting him out of field goal range, although the three points really wouldn't hurt him too badly right there. But Jevin Sneed does a good job getting that ball off. And a lot of times, good lesson for the quarterback. Put it up in the air under pressure like that. Maybe you'll get the pass interference. Sneed up top. And incomplete. Thrown a double coverage. Pat Patterson, the intended receiver, and Kareem Jackson, the right corner on the coverage. They've tried to hit that corner round a couple of times, but yet they've thrown in a double coverage. Yeah, and I don't fault the decision right there by Jefferson. He's taking a chance, first down. You got a, it's obviously an aggressive play call by Ken Austin, but that's what's going to be the rest of the game here. You got to try and make plays. You got to give your playmakers a chance to make it happen. Here comes the blitz off the edge again by Alabama. Go snap, Sneed tries to thread the needle, picked off. Jackson running room 30 40 Jackson 50 Jackson 40 Jackson at the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 20 yard line. You know what?
what that was, Craig. That was a defensive back who's done his homework. Kareem Jackson knew, he knew that play was coming. I mean, he ran that route better than Shea Hodge. You know why it happened, Craig? It happened, and look at Houston Nutt. He knows that's it. If you look at the Vandy film from last week, two times, Jevin Sneed went to Shea Hodge on a slant route to that left side, and they scored touchdowns. In this very same situation, Kareem Jackson said, you know what? I've studied it. I'm going to take a, take a gamble. I'm going to take a risk here and make a play. And he sure enough did right there. He knew it was coming, made up his mind, committed to it, and made a great play. 79-yard return, Alabama. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. Oh, that ball is out. And new life for Ole Miss. How about this Ole Miss defense? Clawing away time after time. That was Jeremy McGee, the right corner. No quit for Ole Miss. Nineteen to three, early here in the fourth quarter. And you know who you have to give credit to, Craig? Of all the people, Jevin Snead and Brandon Bolden for Ole Miss. They're the ones that ran down Kareem Jackson and made that tackle that did not give up the touchdown. All of a sudden, Ole Miss has the ball back. And then Ole Miss defense answered again with the strip. Fresh life off the right side comes Bolden, knocked down. <laughs> And see what's amazing, just how quick Alabama reacts on the defensive end of the ball. Oh, incredibly, incredibly impressive how, how they close. You know, one of the questions I had, too, though, Trent Richardson, the freshman, was the ball carrier for Alabama on that fumble. And I, I, I question why Mark Ingram is not in there in that situation. Sure, Trent Richardson's going to be a heck of a player, but Mark Ingram, do you know how many fumbles he's had in his career? Zero. Zero at Alabama. Well over 200 carries without a fumble. Second down and six. McCluster is back in after being shaken up, number 22, and that's who Sneed goes to. You need, Jeff you need money, you go to the bank. Dexter McCluster. And I'll tell you what, Javier Arenas was right there. You see how the margin of error is so small against Alabama. That throw by Jevin Sneed was on time, on the money, but it had to be. Otherwise, it would have been going the other way again. Now, you made the point earlier, though. If you're going to break down Alabama, you've got to run the perfect route. You really do. You've got to run it right. And the ball has to be put in the right spot. First and ten. On the play action, rolling out Sneed. On his back foot, goes up top. I don't know what happened. That was a misread, but Shea Hodge just kind of pulled up on that throw. Well, what's the most dangerous sport in the world? How about jumping off a cliff and flying like a bird? See you tomorrow on 60 Minutes. Well, Craig, it really wasn't a, a, a misread or anything like that. Shea Hodge just quit on the route. That was a double move that they were trying to get Javier Arenas on, and Javier Arenas did not bite. Devin Sneed still put the ball up out there. Shea Hodge is lucky that he didn't quit, and that ball was not intercepted. Second down at 10 as we roll up on 13 minutes left to play. Two-step drop, little dump down. That ball is out and in the hands. Is that McLean? What a strange game. McLean, that ball popped out. McLean, right place, right time. That happened so quick, I don't even know what happened. You blink, you miss it. Unbelievable. I mean, how do these plays happen consistently time and time again? Alabama had four turnovers last week right there. Just unfortunate for Jevin Sneed. Markeith Summers, the intended receiver. Ball pops out. McLean keeps his feet. I mean, and there it is. They, the, and that's what Houston Nutt was talking about. If the ball is in the air, if there's a chance for Alabama to make the play, Nine times out of ten, they make the play. They don't ever mess up when you give them an opportunity. McLean is the reigning SEC defensive player of the week. Had that big game last week against Kentucky with 12 tackles and a pick. You know what he told us? Hey, I could have played better. I missed a tackle. Exactly. Is that, that's amazing to hear that from a junior out of Decatur, Alabama.
and, and that 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 says a lot about the individual for sure. I could have played. It, I could have played better. I mean, you got to be your own worst critic, and and but it also says a lot about how Nick Saban and his staff preach to these guys that you cannot ever be satisfied. You have to understand that to be the best, you cannot ever give up that striving for perfection. Back and forth to go with the turnovers. Ingram lowers his pad past the 20 yard line and or just a, a covey of rebels in on the tackle. You know Nick Saban told us something I thought very interesting. He studies the psychology of this generation X that he likes to talk about so much coaching now Steve. I don't know what it was like at Notre Dame but trying to reach out to these top teams in the country. The uh, they have what is called a personal team. development center. And what these players are trying to learn is to learn balance of life and learn the middle side of winning. And I think, you know, right now Alabama's got a foot up because yeah. uh, they seem to be uh, tuned in. I think every every one of these teams is going to have one of those centers in there <laughs> next year. Justin Dow, the motion man, spinning for a couple of yards as Ingram passes 15. They'll mark him at the 14-yard line. Cornell made the initial hit for Ole Miss. Fourth and two. Again, again, the Ole Miss defense steps up. Holding Alabama to a field goal attempt one more time. See, they've been on the field over 30 oh. minutes, nearly 31. Tiffin again will try the field goal. They'll mark it at the 31, officially a 31 yard attempt. And the far hash mark. Kick is away. And good from 31. The field goal is good from 32 yards out. Now officially 32. Five field goals for Tiffin. Bama leads 22 3. Three, Alabama. And again, another field goal by Tiffin, his fifth of the afternoon. A 31 yard boot. Steve Berline turnovers the story of this football game. Uh, Houston Nutt told us that the winner of the turnover battle is probably going to win this game. And right here you see one, two. Going to be a total of four interceptions in this fumble by Dexter McCluster right there. Great play by Corey Reamer. But Kareem Jackson right here stepping in front of the slant route, taking it back. And then the last one right here you had. Marquis Summers falling down and popping the ball back up in the air. Rolando McLean making his second interception in the last couple weeks, and Houston Nutt knows yes, yes, yes. against a team like Alabama, you cannot get away with that stuff. You know, Snead had five interceptions coming into this game. Four today, as you mentioned. Nine on the season, and Bama has it teed up with 10.54 to play. Tiffin. Ball bounds into the end zone. Touchback on this at the 20 yard line. Tomorrow on CBS, it's all new, beginning with 60 minutes, followed by the amazing race, Three Rivers and Cold Case. Check it out only on CBS. Well, today's keys play, key players in this ball game: uh, McElroy, 147 yards; Ingram, 135 yards on the ground. Sneed is going to be remembered for the four picks in the cluster today: uh, 11 yards on the ground, 22 yards receiving. He'll take the snap from center as McCluster tries to turn the corner and wrestle out of bounds at the 24. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brandes. Well, I'll tell you what, that looks like an interception. Maybe, maybe only Timmy B could have made one play like that, huh? <laughs> Sneed throws it out to the flat. It's Todd Holden down the sideline, bumped out where they push him out. Yeah, at the 31. And McLean in on that stop. Well, if you're Alabama, you're more than content to just give up these little. Dinky little plays, you know, three or four yard run, uh, uh, a little dump pass like that to Bolden. Let them have those all day long. Uh, obviously, you'd like to keep the ball in the field of play to keep that clock running, but the one thing Alabama is not going to do right now, they're not going to give up the big play. First and ten. Sneed settles back under pressure and threw that ball right on the shoe taps of Marquis Summers, incomplete. Brandon Bolden's pass to number 16, Marquis Summers, incomplete. 
Well, I'll tell you, Terrence Cody, big Terrence Cody, coming right up the gut on that one. He let he let Jevin Sneed know exactly how much he weighs. I'll tell you, those arms look like bedposts. 6'5", 354. Oh, he hit Jevin Sneed and then I mean, put every single one of his pounds on top of him. Second out of ten. Do a little hide. He was hiding Sneak behind Sneed. Sneed gave him the ball and Bama right on top of it. Well, you know, the, the, all the that the Old Miss had accomplished in the, when they came out in the second half and showed the signs of life, settled for the field goal, their first drive down, and then then they were driving to score on that last drive. I think Kareem Jackson's interception took all the wind out of the sails and Kirby Smart, his defense rose to the occasion like they have all day long. This is an offense now that is not playing with that life they had the last few series. Third down and 13, 0 for 8 on third down conversion. Two step drop, tucks, here comes Sneed. Still on his feet, makes another nice cut, upended it, up it at the 37 by Kareem Jackson. Great block by Dexter McCluster at the end of this to give Jevin Sneed the opportunity to make a few extra yards. Right there. See, one thing I think you and I have learned from this game today, Sneed struggled, yes, but Sneed, uh, pretty good runner coming he, out of the pocket. He moves well. He moves well. He, he is the total package, if you ask me, in terms of what he offers physically. Timeout, Ole Miss, 8.37 to play. Could be the ball game right here. You got to get the ball across the 41 yard line to keep this drive alive. You score, maybe you try an onside kick. But right now, Ole Miss has to move the football. And, and Ole Miss can't go any further than this play right here because you said it. If they don't make this fourth down conversion, you can almost start listening to the lady singing the song in the background. Well, I've got a few folks walking out in the parking lot yeah. right now believing the lady is singing. But if, if, if you can convert this and find a way to get down and score, you still got a chance. In motion goes Lionel Brough. Shotgun rolling out of Sneed. Pressured, throws, caught at the 45, and Bro keeps Steve Ole Miss breathing. Number 21, Lionel Bro. I'll tell you what, that was a, a, a big time throw and catch. Bro, that ball behind him, Lionel Bro came back and made the catch, knowing he's going to get hit. But Jevin Sneed, under pressure, he was about to get hit, rolling to his right, put enough on that ball to get it out there and complete it. Big time play by both those two young men. You know who that was. That's uh, McLean, the middle linebacker, everywhere on this field, inside, outside, sideline to sideline. Clock rolls up on eight minutes to play. Shotgun is Sneed. Quick throw, incomplete at midfield and right on his back. McLean again bringing pressure, but it was Mark Barron, the strong safety, broke up that play. Yeah. Second down. McLean was breathing down Jevin Sneed's neck. I'll tell you, the guy has got an unbelievable ability to get to the football, get to the quarterback. Whatever his job is, he's going to find a way to get there and make something happen. Steve, you talked about the physical abilities of Jevin Sneed. What's missing? Well, you know, I don't know if, if you can say anything's missing. I mean, that's the question that needs to be answered. There's a lot more to playing quarterback than just the physical part of it. They throw it back to Bolden. Rumbling room, 40-yard line, 30, 35, 30. High steps it to the 20. Go back and do your research. Was, was, was Bolton a hurdler in high school? This That's guy, the second big jump of the day. And a very well executed, well designed screen pass right there, taking advantage of Alabama's pursuit. Alabama pursues so hard with the ball. They fake the screen to the right side, throw it back left. And then you get the big man rumbling down the sideline. Wow. Ole Miss, in the air. Ole Miss knocking again on the door. That was a 32-yard high hurdle. Boy, the big fella, 220 pounds, and he can jump. But Ole Miss still going after it. Swing it out to the flat. That ball just out of the reach. Incomplete. Rodney Scott, the intended receiver. And now here's Tom Ritter. Delay of game. 
Play clock ran out. But to go back to that Jevin Sneed, you know, there, there are so many things that go into being a, a, a successful quarterback every level you move up. There's the leadership, there's the decision making, there's the poise, the presence, the understanding, there's the, the uncoachable things, that the heart when you get down in a game. How do you how do you rally your troops to come back in those situations? Movement. John Jerry, the senior. Just down the road from Baseville. Set ball, ball start. So instead of moving forward, they're moving back. It's been a tough day for Jevin Sneed. You know, the, the hits have been coming all day long. It's, it seems like he's had someone coming in his face. That was a goal of Alabama. Obviously, it always is the goal. And right there, the interception, the, the backbreaker interception. And then the last series, Rolando McLean making a play one more time. Tough day. Goes down at 20. Got to find it over to see that ball and taken away. Boy, Hodge had it. Try to bat it, bat it back to himself. And Woodall and Jackson riding his back. There are very few throws against this Alabama defense that are not contested. I mean, really, the ball has got to be on the money or, or it's going to get tipped up in the air and someone's going to come down with that football in the wrong color jersey. They are so good at challenging every ball that's in the air. Just 11 of 33 on the day. The four interceptions. That was number fifth. His fifth. In the shotgun, Steve. Sets it up. I don't know who he's throwing it to, but it's incomplete. Incomplete now. Time now for our Red Lobster. Scholar athlete presented by Red Lobster, and it's the Ole Miss Center. They run Gerald's. So 3.06 in mathematics. How about the SEC Fall Academic Honor Roll? Both 0708, 08, 09. Gerald's knocked around a little bit. They came back to play. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Ramis General Scholarship Fund. Way to go, Mr. Gerald's. Sneed in trouble. Throws. And again, Washington bringing pressure. And Sneed, there's a flag down, trying to plead his case. And they're going to pick it up. And Lorenzo Washington came right up the pipe. And this Ole Miss offensive line, you know, you watch them on film, they look like they're making progress, but they have not played a defense of this magnitude. And, I think that the, the, the schemes and the blitz and the physical ability of this Alabama defense has really exposed some areas of weakness because Jevin Sneed, in his defense, has been getting hit all day long. He's gone basically uh, nearly exclusively from the shotgun. He'll go again, shotgun. There's the pressure, side steps. Now decides to tuck and run. 30 25 at the 20. Sneed with room and is chopped down. Great run again at the 15 yard line. And Javier Arenas with the tackle. Craig, this this is an example of what I'm talking about. There's only three guys. Look at this. There's three guys rushing right here. Now watch what happens right up the middle. No one even touches this. I mean, it's it's like it's a joke right there. That there's no way that that was a scheme that Alabama came up with. That was just guys not doing their job. Back to Craig and Steve in Oxford. All right, thank you, Tim. Here in Oxford, Alabama, 22 and Ole Miss 3. Make sure you stay tuned tonight. Prime time here on CBS. Florida and LSU, number one against number four. Tim Tebow has been clear to play. We shall see what that will, uh, what, what unfolds tonight in Death Valley. Well, this so game. clear to play, but doesn't mean he'll play. We'll see what uh, the coach Urban Meyer decides to do. And this game today has shown the complete package that Alabama has. And, uh, and that'll be a good test between those two teams to see who their number one competition is going to be coming out of, out of that game tonight. Boy, Ingram has been impressive today. Sophomore out of Flint, Michigan. What they try to do at Alabama is run Ingram. They've run Richardson today. Upchurch has been banged up a little bit. Terry Grant we haven't seen, but they really go with the hot back. And I can't imagine anyone hot, hotter than Mark Ingram. Oh, no, I, I would say not. The total package. Number 
with six minutes to play here in Oxford. The center goes McElroy again, the ball carrier. Couple yards for Ingram. Let's see, let's go back and uh, update those above the lines. Well, I think you look at the Alabama offense. Don't lose your balance. They've, they've run the ball 33. They've passed it 35. That's pretty good balance. They've been in control of this game. They've been able, even though Ole Miss's defense has played extremely well because of the way their offense has played, Alabama's been able to stay very balanced. And Ole Miss on defense, they have shown up on first down, I believe. Even though you look at the stat, it says they've averaged 4.7 yards per play. They have stepped up all day long and, and made life very difficult for the Alabama offense. Uh, this defense for Ole Miss has nothing to be ashamed about. In motion, Preston Dial. Stretching out to Ingram. Finds a hole, breaks a tackle. Strength, power to the 44. And, and now we can see what this Alabama team thrives on. They, they get you down, they physically beat on you all game, and then they get physical. They get more physical at the end. And Ingram, he looks as fresh as he can possibly be. Running that ball, tucking it up in there, and carrying people on his back. 17-yard pickup. Ole Miss, Steve, had not helped themselves. The five turnovers. And Alabama just takes advantage time after time. Nothing fancy. It's just straight up knock you in the mouth football. Ingram. Back to New York. Number Here's 22. For Steve Berline, what is Houston not going to do to get Jevin Davis's head right? Back to you. Jevin Steve. Thank you, Park. Well, I, I think that that's going to be a big project here this next week. Timmy, uh, Jevin Sneed has, has got to be able to put this behind him, move on, understand guys have bad days. And this is one of the worst possible for him. But, hey, there's a lot more football to be played this year. This team, this this whole old old miss institution is counting on him to come back strong and shake it off go out and play well the last part of the season third down at two that picture tells a story of sneed with the towel over his shoulder you know timmy makes a great point you got to get the head right and that's going to be uh houston nuts biggest chore of the week homecoming Alabama Birmingham comes to town. Now they've got Richardson in the backfield, the freshman. Ole Miss continues to pound it. Number Trying three, to fill the gap. With the football. Clock running up on three minutes to play. And that brings up fourth down and short. I know the score lopsided. But Steve, you got to salute Ole Miss defensively today. You really do. I mean, we've talked about it all day long. I don't know how much more you can give credit to a, a defense that's losing in the ball game, 22 to three. Fourth and one. But this is a defense that has fought its heart out all day long. They've been put in terrible positions from the very earliest stage of this game, and to keep it a ball game for as long as they did by standing up and, and, and holding Alabama to field goals three times in the first half and a couple of times in the second half when they've had the ball well in the red zone. Absolutely amazing. It's on Nick Saban wait for that clock to run and calls timeout. We'll step aside 228 to play. North Cincinnati and Baltimore understand by the way Eli will be a game time decision from battling with that plantar fasciitis. You ever had that problem in your day? Number 22, Mark Ingram. The inflammation, made. by the way, of the soft tissue. I, I don't even know if I can say that, but but the, the, I've never had it. I know that, but I do know it's painful. I think I you would know if you did. Yeah, yeah I, I know people that have had it, and they've, they've told me very clearly oh, that it's painful. Line. Uh, Eli is one tough guy. Those Mannings are all tough guys. They, they, if they can suit up, they're going to play. Well, they are. Let's just say well respected in this part of the country. Yeah, we are in their part of the country for sure. McElroy goes under centers. We hit the two minute mark. Well, Ted's still popping. Richardson. Uh, Time now for the play of the three, game Trent presented Richardson by Outback State County. Uh, th this this was a play that I think really was a nail in the coffin for Ole Miss. Jevin Sneed trying to throw the slant route to Shea Hodge and Kareem Jackson knew without a doubt that it was coming. 
tremendous anticipation and the turn back. It really just took all the wind out of Jevin Sneed and his teammates. That was their chance to close it to possibly a one score game. Well, you just saw Sneed, his numbers 11 of 35, four interceptions, 140 yards passing. Off the left side. And let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Craig, I want to take you to Baton Rouge in Death Valley. There's Superman without his cape. Now, he has been medically cleared, but is still a game time decision for Urban Meyer. Doing a lot of running around. It looks as though he may be able to go. He's got his feet underneath him. Number one, Florida against LSU. By the way, Archie has been cleared for halftime of LSU Florida. Back to you. <laughs> Oh, good to know Archie's ready to go. And I tell you, if you put black under the eyes, you going to play? That's what Tebow's got. He's, he's trying to make a statement that he's ready to play, I think. 40 seconds on the fourth quarter clock. Bama just going to run this game out. Crimson Tide, Steve, going to run their record as 6-0 and on the season. 3-0 three, three and and in the game. SEC West. And next week... It's the old ball coach, South Carolina, taking on Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's the SEC. Every week's a big one. This right here for Nick Saban and his troops. So control of the SEC West established today. 6-0, 3-0 on the West, while Houston Nutt and Ole Miss will drop down to 3-2 and 1-2 and and in the SEC West. For Steve Berline, Craig Bullerjack, we say so long from Oxford with a final score, Alabama 22 and Ole Miss 3. Tonight at 8 Eastern, the Home Depot SEC continues. Number one ranked Florida takes on fourth ranked LSU. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship.